Hi class and welcome to today's lecture. We're talking all about exercise for health and fitness. So before we get started, it's important to ensure that everyone understands that exercise and fitness is similar to nutrition and it's going to be very individualistic according to whatever the person's goals are and what they want to accomplish. And we want to keep in mind that exercising and fitness and getting healthy is more so about the internal benefits and you being able to do whatever you need to do in life and not so much what your body looks like. That's just a side effect, a positive side effect, but it's just a side effect of why we're actually working out and trying to get fit. All right, so benefits of exercise, there's a lot of benefits. There's immediate benefits and long-term benefits, so we'll talk about that on the next slide. But all in all, reducing the risk of premature death, we do see in studies that individuals that work out consistently, and that's an important term, consistent, they're able to eliminate their early termination or dying early. Improving cardiorespiratory function, that means the heart and the lungs. Obviously, those two are very, very important in sustaining us as individuals. More efficient metabolism and improved cell health. So if you want your metabolism to work better, if you want your cells to function better, if you just want your body to overall, in a sense, be able to function better, exercise and movement is going to be a great method. Improving body composition. And when we talk about body composition, we're talking about everything your body's made of. So muscle, fat, bones, organs, hair, skin, all those things, water. When we're talking about fitness, a lot of individuals and a lot of the studies have been done on fat versus um, or fat free versus full fat mass. So we're really looking at muscle mass and fat mass. How much of it do you have? And we understand that in health, the more muscle mass you have, the, um, the less fat mass you have, the healthier you are versus the opposite. Disease prevention and management, it really helps in immune function. And that's another point down here. And also it helps to prevent cardiovascular disease and high blood pressure and diabetes. And there's a lot of studies to support this. Improve psychological and emotional wellness. We'll talk about the benefits psychologically and emotionally of just movements and getting up and doing something. Uh, prevention of injuries and low back pain, especially when it comes to muscular endurance. That's going to be important for that. And improve wellness for life overall. And with this, understand that health is not just fitness. It's not just nutrition. It's also sleep. It's also how well hydrated you are. It's also how well you manage your stress and what are your social connections and your relationships. So health is a whole series of things. There's a lot of pillars that go into that. So keep that in mind when we're talking about these different aspects. All right, so for those that are visual, we have a nice diagram here that your author has provided for you. Immediate effects, we talked about effects in the brain. There's a lot of studies showing that you can actually get smarter or you can increase your cognitive health by just moving, especially when you do things like lunges and resistance training and recruiting those larger muscle groups. Increase heart rate, stroke volume, your heart's able to pump more efficiently, your blood is able to flow more efficiently, meaning your cells are getting more oxygen, they're getting more nutrients, um, there's going to be decreased blood flow to the stomach. So generally, it's not recommended that you eat right before you work out because your body has to prioritize. Am I going to send blood to the muscles so they can function? Or am I going to send blood to the intestines so they can actually digest? Um, keep that in mind. Increase ATP production. That's going to be our energy. That's important. Have increased flow to the skin. There's some individuals that recommend if you want to grow your hair or have glowing skin, work out, which it does work. On the long-term effects... What I want to point out, there's a lot of them. So sweating is going to be something that clears out the toxins. That's going to be one way that our body can clean out those toxins. But one thing I like to point out is where it says decrease body fat. So when a lot of indiv individuals start to get healthier, they start a workout program, they're really looking for that fat mass to decrease quickly. Notice how it's not in the immediate effects, but it's in the long-term effects. It's going to take about four to six weeks for any individual to be able to notice a change in their fat mass. And that's because fat is an organ and it's not something that we can just take out and suck out and eliminate because our body utilizes it. All right, when it comes to promoting longevity, there's a lot of studies to back this up. This is extremely clear in the research that the more sedentary you are, meaning sitting more than six hours a day, the higher risk of early death you have versus if you're active, the lower risk of early death you have. Keep in mind though, that with these two different populations, the extremely active and the sedentary, that the individuals who are extremely active 
are able to manage their stress very well. They're able to get good sleep. They've been able to dial down their diet to what works for them. They have good relationships. So there's a whole host of things that go into that versus a lot of sedentary individuals. Maybe they have bad habits of smoking or they drink chronically or they don't get good sleep because they're stressed about finances at home. And there's a lot of reasons why sedentary individuals may not have longevity like individuals that are extremely active um, but one of them is very clear which is movement all right another example we're going to talk about bmi a little later and this is going to be body mass index so it's going to be those charts that your physician pulls up or you can pull up on google it has your height on one side it has your weight on the top and then if you bring those and meet them in the middle it'll give you a number and generally that number for healthy individuals is going to be anywhere for females from 18 to 24 for males it may be from 14 to 21 um, when it comes to genders sex is going to play a huge role and we'll talk about that a little later but you'll notice on this chart that those that are more in the fit column overall generally have a lower risk of death versus those that are in the unfit column keep in mind that we do have those handful of outliers of individuals who are extremely unhealthy but for whatever reason they live to be 104 years old and then we have individuals that are extremely healthy and for whatever reason they died from a heart attack at the age of 40 right so we do have those outliers we can't say that this encompasses everybody but in general if we took about 90 percent 95 percent of the population most individuals would fall within this graph all right, disease prevention and management. So one of the big ones is cardiovascular disease. We know that CVD is huge and it's a huge link to metabolic syndrome. So on the next slide, I'll show you a little bit of what that is. In terms of prevention of this, exercise and especially weight training is gonna help to improve blood fat levels and blood pressure. It's gonna help improve HDL. And remember from our last lecture, there's really no good or bad cholesterol. It's just the HDLs we wanna have a little higher than the LDLs. Uh, interfere with disease process so in terms of coronary artery blockages and the issue with that is the heart needs blood itself and so if one of those arteries or multiple of those arteries is blocked preventing the heart itself from getting blood that means that part of the heart's going to die that means you're going to have a heart attack that means you may die prematurely all right and then reduce risk of high blood pressure coronary artery disease stroke so just simply moving really helps your lymphatic system really helps your cardiovascular system and all those functions to actually work efficiently versus if you're sedentary and you're getting no movement your body has a really hard time clearing out toxins all right so when it comes to metabolic syndrome uh, different types of metabolic syndrome is hypertension we know that cancer which is a big one pcos is what i hear a lot of female students asking me about which is polycystic ovarian syndrome and when we talk about PCOS, we know that that's highly linked to lifestyle because of the increased infertility rates that we have, especially in the female population. It used to be that maybe the males were doing something, they were drinking too much, or they had um, heat or microwaves near their testicles, or there was a reason why their sperm weren't acting appropriately. But now we see that a lot of the infertility is coming from females nowadays and a lot of it is linked to metabolic syndrome and again that's just lifestyle so you'll notice that there is an apple and a person on the side of this image and the purpose of that is to demonstrate that those that are apple shaped those that carry fat in their abdomen the most those are the individuals that are at higher risk of these metabolic syndromes and just because you have a lot of weight in your midsection doesn't mean that you're necessarily an apple shape for example i myself am an apple shape so if i were to gain an excess of body fat it accumulates in my abdomen first so that lets me know that if i were to allow myself to let go or get out of hand in terms of my body fat composition and accumulation that i would be at higher risk of developing these if i were to gain weight versus somebody who were to gain the same amount of weight but maybe they're a pear shape maybe they gain weight in their hips right the danger of the apple is that as fat accumulates in the torso it's closer to the heart it's closer to those essential organs so that means fat's going to accumulate faster on those organs versus someone that holds a lot of fat in their hips 
All right, disease prevention and management. So regular physical activity obviously decreases uh, cancer risks by improving the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system, again, remember, is our cleaning system. And the only way that lymphatic system can work is if we move. It doesn't have muscles on it, it doesn't have pumps on it. The muscles are the pumps. So we need to have motion. We need to get up and move regularly to allow that lymphatic um, fluid to flow to pull out those toxins. So we can either sweat it out or we can urinate or poop it out. Osteoporosis, keep in mind that the bones need impact, they need tension, they need a certain amount of healthy stress in order to adapt. So if you are an individual that's sedentary, you never put any stress on your bones, then that means your body is going to say, well, you really don't need these, so I'm going to start to decrease the amount of bones that I have. Now, if you put stress on your bones, your body's going to adapt and say, all right, I need stronger bones because this is a physical activity I'm being taken through. Keep in mind, vitamin um, D is important for this as well as calcium is important for this. So it's kind of a combination, it's a package deal when it comes to bones. And type two diabetes, if you know an individual with type two diabetes or you are an individual with type two diabetes, one of the easiest ways to control your blood glucose is after you eat, you go on a 10 to 20 minute walk. That's gonna be extremely beneficial to control that blood glucose. All right, improve psychological and emotional wellness. If you wanna reduce your anxiety, go move and do something. If you wanna reduce depression and improve your mood, go move. If you want to improve your sleep, especially if you're the type to work out in the morning, some studies are showing that if you work out in the morning, you're able to sleep better at night versus if you work out in the afternoon. But either way, you're gonna get good benefits. So just do what's better for you. Uh, reducing stress, enhancing self-esteem. I've never not met one person that said, I wish I never did that workout, right? Because you always feel good after you do a workout. Maybe you don't feel like doing it in the first place, but once you're done, I've never met someone that regretted doing a workout. Increasing your product productivity, you can actually enhance your creativity and your intellectual function. You can actually help yourself think better by moving and working out. And increasing opportunities for social interactions. If you go to the gym or if you work out with a partner or if you work out with your significant other, those are great ways to connect. And interesting studies have shown that if a male and a female were to work out together, because of the endorphins that get released, every time they see each other after that, those same endorphins start to get released. And that's a way to, um, that's a way the individuals start to like each other a little more uh, is because the same endorphins start to get released because you're experiencing that activity together. And we understand that exercise really is an endorphin release. It really does get those feel good chemicals released that really improve your mood. Long-term protective effects, we talked about immune system function. We know that the lymphatic system is involved in that. If you just want your immune system to be stronger, movement is going to be a better option for you. There's going to be a good option for you. Prevention of injury and low back pain, again, by maintaining muscular endurance, by ensuring that your muscles can actually work for a long period of time, that's going to be a great way to prevent those issues. And improve wellness of life. Fitness along with diet, sleep, hydration, all those other things, that's going to be a way to really improve your overall quality and wellness of life. All right, so what is physical fitness? Now that we know kind of the benefits of it, what is it actually and what are some things we can actually start to implement today to improve our physical fitness? Physical fitness is going to be the body's ability to respond or adapt to the different demands and stress of physical effort. So some individuals want to get physically fit because of their sport. Some individuals want to get physically fit because they want to be able to play and run with their kids. Some individuals want to get physically fit if stuff hits the fan and the government starts to take over and they need to run for the hills, right? There's a lot of different reasons, but make sure that your reason is more than just superficial. It's more than I just want to look like a Instagram model. Understand that health is internal and it's a way for you to get your body to be utilized as a vehicle to accomplish the different tasks that you want to do in life. All right, five components that we're going to talk about cardiorespiratory endurance, which means the heart and the lungs, muscular strength, which means how much can you lift, muscular endurance means how much can your muscles go through, how long can they stay contracted. Flexibility, obviously we wanna be able to move all through our range of motion. And then body composition, again, is a lot of things, but we're mainly gonna focus on fat-free mass or muscle mass and fat mass. 
All right, so cardiorespiratory endurance. What we have with cardiorespiratory endurance is the ability to perform prolonged large muscle dynamic exercises at a moderate to high intensity. So really, are you able to walk up the stairs without getting out of breath and feeling like you're gonna die? Are you able to run half a mile? Can you jog up a hill? Can you go down the hill? Like what, what is going to be your endurance and what are you gonna be able to do? Some individuals wanna be able to run in a soccer game for two to three hours, right? There's different levels of cardiorespiratory endurance and you really have to identify in your fitness goal what you want that to be, right? So when it comes to conditions relating to the heart and metabolism, when it comes to cardio endurance and respiratory endurance, your heart's gonna be able to function more efficiently. Your lungs are gonna be able to function more efficiently the more that you stress them. And remember, we have different types of stress this is going to be a good type of stress. If you wanna improve your body's just overall chemical systems and the way that the body functions, this is something great to do. So you can run, you can bike, you can dance, you can swim. There's a lot of different ways. As long as you're moving to the point where you're out of breath a little bit or a lot of bit, whatever floats your boat, then you're gonna be working this system. All right, when it comes to muscular strength, endurance and flexibility, we kind of put this all in one slide, muscular strength, how much can you lift? And we see that in studies, the individuals that weight lift the longest and most consistent, doesn't have to be heavy, but if you're stressing that muscular strength, you're going to prolong longevity. So we have 80 year olds, 90 year olds, uh, individuals getting up into their hundreds who are able to fully function and move just fine because they've been able to maintain muscle mass. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. So if you don't utilize your muscle mass, your body will start to atrophy or start to get small because now it's starting to put energy elsewhere because you don't stress it. All right, muscular endurance, the ability to resist fatigue. So a huge example of this is going to be posture, right? So if you look at my house, I really don't have chairs with backrest on it because I want to ensure that I'm practicing that muscular endurance and I'm really stressing my muscles, especially my postural muscles. So over the day, I don't start slouching because my muscles are getting tired, right? We want to make sure to work those out so we can actually maintain good posture because it's going to prevent low back injuries. It's going to prevent overall muscular injuries if you're playing in a sport or if you're working out. And then flexibility, you can maintain this or you can get this by doing practices like yoga, you can do static stretching, um, you can do ballet, you can do dance. There's, there's a lot of different flexibility modalities that you can utilize out there, but really wanna make sure that we can move through an entire range of motion because that's gonna prevent injury. I mean, if you imagine a soccer player not being able to fully bring their leg up or touch their toe when they go and kick a ball, that muscle is gonna be tight and they're more likely to strain that muscle because that muscle is just not used to moving throughout the entire range of motion. All right, body composition. Again, we talked about this a little bit when it comes to fitness, exercise, and even diet. Um, we're talking mainly about muscle mass versus fat mass. But composition is gonna be muscle, bone, water. The fat-free mass is really what we wanna get higher of. The fat mass is what we wanna get lower of. And remember, age and sex do play a role in this. So men, generally you're gonna have less body mass or body fat versus fat-free mass because your body can function that way. And females, we're gonna have a little more fat mass, especially on the lower abdomen or the tummy because our bodies are meant to carry life and fat is an energy. And if we're going to carry life, that takes a lot of energy from our bodies. And so we need quick sources of energy directly at the source to be able to utilize, to be able to build that life. So you ladies, if you're like, oh, I wanna get that, that fat on my lower abdomen gone because I see these models have that, understand that there is such a thing, especially when it comes to carrying children as being underweight or being too small. Um, Best way though to lose fat, if you notice that you have ac excess fat and not enough fat-free mass is diet, exercise, again, sleep, stress reduction, and to weight train. If you have extra fat mass, understand that it doesn't mean that you're a lazy person. You may have a lot of stress in your life or your sleep quality may be low or you may not be well hydrated. There's a lot of different reasons. So I really stress throughout this entire lecture that health is a whole aspect. There's a lot of pillars in it. It's not just one thing. All right. So skill related components to fitness. So there's different skill related fitness 
um, that involve the ability to perform particular sports or activities. So in it, we have speed, the ability to move quickly and perform movements quickly. There's power to be able to pull up heavy weight very fast. Um, there's agility where you can position quickly and accurately. Um, there is balance where you are able to maintain your equilibrium without falling over coordination and we've seen those individuals that are not coordinated so it's being able to perform those motor tasks accurately and smoothly to accomplish whatever that task is that you're trying to do and reaction time so an example for speed would be like track and fields right we have those individuals they want to run 100 meters as fast as possible right so they need that turnover they need their legs to move very quickly power would be like uh, wrestling Right. So you need to be able to move someone's body weight very quickly because you don't want to get stuck in a position where they pin you. You want to pin them. Agility would be like soccer in basketball. If you are trying to get around someone on the field, you want to be able to have that agility to change position quickly and accurately. Um, balance, a great example would be gymnastics, right? It's not the only sport that needs balance. All sports really need balance, but gymnastics, ballet, that would be a great example of when you're moving in space, especially if you're on one foot and you need to be able to either move and stop and stay stationary or be stationary and move with accuracy. Coordination, all movement creates or um, needs to have coordination. And then reaction time, an example of this, not so much in movement or sport is like driving. You need to be able to have that signal from your brain, get to your muscles and you react very quickly. So all sports really utilize balance, coordination and reaction time. All right, for you visual individuals, this is an example of the different things that we already talked about. But again, skill related is gonna be that speed, agility, that reaction time, being able to have that balance. Yoga is a great example of how to be able to maintain that balance. I have had some football players who took ballet um, classes to get their balance and coordination up. So it's really important to understand that cross training is very, very helpful when you're trying to get all of these components of fitness. All right, components of an active lifestyle. So when it comes to being active, nearly 22% of US adults were meeting both aerobic and muscle strengthening guidelines in 2017. I know that was a little while ago, but understand that's a very low percent of the population that was actually able to say that they had some sort of fitness, meaning there's a huge portion of our population that is sedentary, and we wanna ensure that us ourselves are not falling into those statistics. So if we're able to maintain an active movement lifestyle, meaning we're not sitting all day, we're not getting stuck in that YouTube binge uh, watching, we're not getting stuck in that YouTube uh, black hole where three hours go by and you didn't realize you've been watching videos for three hours, right? So some things individuals do is every 20 minutes, they'll set an alarm or every 30 minutes. And when that alarm goes off, they'll get up and walk around or they'll finish with a task and they'll get up and do some movement or after every meal, they'll go and walk. It's really just having consistent movement throughout the day, not just sitting or not just standing all day. All right, levels of physical activity. There's different levels of physical activity. So understand that when you start a workout program, don't do anything that you haven't earned the right to do yet. So if you've never lifted a weight, if you've never even done body weight exercises like push-ups or squats, then you need to start with those things. Even though you see these people on Instagram doing this, they've been doing those things for years. So understand you can't just jump to something like that as much as we would like to. Understand your body, know your body, and know its limitations because the last thing you want to get hurt or you want to do is start a workout program and then all of a sudden you get hurt and now you have to stop for a month and then you're back at square one, right? So exercise generally is going to be planned. It's going to be structured. It's repetitive movement. So you need to train your body to be able to perform these movements. If I want to lift 100 pounds, I can't just do it once and say, okay, I'm done, right? You have to do it repetitively to maintain it. This whole thing is consistency to maintain an active lifestyle and to maintain health, all right? Moderate intensity physical activity is essential for health. You don't have to kill yourself in the gym, right? But also make sure that you don't go there and just go through the motions, take a couple pictures for Instagram and then call it a day, right? You wanna stress your body, you wanna challenge your body, but you wanna make sure that you're doing it in a way that is fun for you. You're doing it in a way that really challenges uh, your creativity in the gym and with your physical activity. 
All right, increasing physical activity. So current guidelines for weekly practice, at least 150 minutes of moderate to intense uh, aerobic physical activity or 75 minutes of vigorous, intense aerobic activity. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can mow the lawn, you can sweep, you can go for a run, uh, you can swim, you can dance. Um, just find something that's gonna get you moving, it's gonna get you out of breath, it's gonna get you sweating for about 30 minutes a day, at least if you can get 30 minutes a day. Everyone should avoid inactivity, right? Kids are very, very good at avoiding inactivity. They're constantly up and going. Uh, and that's kind of a good thing for us older individuals because as you get older, you start to get more sedentary and it's helpful to have younger individuals around because they want you to play, they want you to get up. So really play with your little brothers and sisters, cousins, uh, nephews, nieces, get up and be active with them. And strengthening exercises. You should add some sort of strengthening, whether that's lifting weights or whether that's doing body weight. And females understand that you're not gonna get bulky, right? That's just not naturally how females are built. We don't have that much testosterone in our bodies to be able to build up these huge muscles that we see on guys. So don't worry about getting too big, right? Don't worry about getting too bulky. But getting strong is always a good benefit because if you're in a situation where you have to fight your way out, you wanna be able to have that strength to overpower whoever's trying to, uh, to take you and be able to get out of those situations. All right, so increasing physical activity to manage weight. Again, we have a whole lecture on weight management um, next, but 90 minutes of physical activity a day, you can't outwork a poor diet. So if you're working out for three hours a day and then you go and eat Del Taco and McDonald's and Taco Bell, understand that that's not gonna be very beneficial for you because it's it's a whole idea. It's You have to look at the whole picture. You can work out, but if your eating's poor, your sleep is poor, your stress management is poor, you're not gonna see the benefits and the effects that you would like to see that you think you should see, all right? You have to work on all of it. You wanna make sure that you're improving your physical fitness. So as you work out, as you're consistent, you're challenging yourself more and more. Don't just stay with the same old thing seven days a week. Reducing that sedentary time. Again, you can set an alarm, you can get up and walk, you can move. If you're watching Netflix, you can march in place. There's different things that you can do to still do the things that you like, but not remain sedentary. All right, so examples of moderate amount of exercises. These are just examples of things that you can do. You can wash your car, you can wash windows, you can garden. Um, if you have someone that has a wheelchair and you wanna wheel yourself in a wheelchair, if you are in a wheelchair, that's gonna be a great way to actually get some sort of movement. Raking leaves, walking, shoveling snow, um, walking upstairs, sport activities, obviously there's all those sports that you can utilize. And even if you're not a competitive athlete, you can still join leagues. You can join leagues that just play soccer for fun or play basketball for fun. You could just get a group of friends together and go out to the park and shoot some hoops. It really just depends on what floats your boat. All right, so other examples, speed walking. There is actually speed walking competitions. I had a friend that was a um, semi-professional speed walker. And if you think I walk fast, she is intense. Um, vacuuming, household cleaning, you can play tennis, you can um, lift up your dog. I've done squats with my dog before in the kitchen just because she was there and I felt like moving. Um, you can surf, you can um, go snowboarding. There's a lot of different things you can do. Just really find something that works for you. All right, physical fitness activity and exercise recommendations. So general health, again, about 150 minutes to 75 minutes if you're able to of just some sort of physical activity total, right? So it doesn't mean that you have to work out for that amount of time. If you wanna work out for 20 minutes in the morning and then maybe go on a 30 minute walk in the for lunch. And then in the evening, maybe you're doing a half hour of yoga or something, all those things add up. So you don't have to do it all at one time. All right, increasing health and fitness benefits, um, achieving or maintaining weight loss. So these are just some general guidelines on if you wanna increase your flexibility, you should at least two days per week hold each stretch for, I recommend 30 seconds. You can do for 10 seconds, but most studies are showing that you actually get the stretching plastic changes at 30 seconds. Um, and then neuromuscular training. There's you can work on balance. You can throw a ball back and forth with someone. It's really just getting up and moving and not sitting and playing video games all day or watching Netflix all day. All right, so designing your exercise program. So by this point, you should have your goal. You should have your why. 
All right, what is your why for getting fit? What is your why for getting healthy? And make sure it's deeper than just physical. Yeah, your body is gonna start to look how you want it to. It's gonna start to look like the modern physical, physically fit body, but understand that that's just superficial, right? You really wanna look on the inside because this body is a vehicle for you to be able to do things in life and to be able to bless other people in life. Um, make sure that you start slow. All right, you want to move up the physical activity pyramid. You don't want to go from zero to 100 real quick because that's not going to be beneficial for you and you can injure yourself that way. And you want to explore the benefits of high intensity interval training or HIT training. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But overall, just make sure it's something that's fun to do and make sure it's something that you're going to consistently do. You're not just going to do it for a week or two weeks and then stop for six months and then do it for a week or two weeks and stop for six months. All right, so this is the activity pyramid we talked about. Um, sedentary activity obviously is gonna be at the top. You want that to be a shorter amount of your day versus the other type of activities that you can do. So strength training, physical activity training, as you come down, you can do cardiorespiratory endurance training like walking, jogging, bicycling. Um, and then you can do moderate intensity activities, cleaning the house or raking up leaves or washing the car. So there's a lot of different things you can do to, main, to make sure that you don't have this pyramid flipped to where the majority of it is sedentary and then you're just doing a little bit of exercise. You really want it to be this way. All right, so lifestyle, physical activities, moderate exercises, vigorous activities. Again, these are just examples of things that you can do. So if you need to pause this, you can kind of read through this a little bit and look at the benefits. The benefits are all pretty much going to be similar. You're going to have better blood glucose control. So your blood sugar is going to be controlled. Your blood pressure is going to be able to go down. You're going to decrease your risk for CVD. Um, you're going to improve your mood. You're going to improve your immune system, no matter which one you do. All right, so first steps, obtain medical clearance. Make sure you're healthy enough to actually perform whatever exercise or activity you're gonna do. Now, if it's walking, you really don't need medical clearance for walking, because that's one thing we were all designed to do was to walk, right? Um, if you have underlying health conditions, if you have heart conditions, things like that, make sure you just check in with your physician and say, hey, I'm trying to do high intensity interval training. Is this something that my heart is able to take? Right? Make sure you get that clearance and keep yourself safe and healthy prior to starting any high intensity exercise. All right, observe the basic principles of physical training. So specificity, you wanna make sure that you have exercises that are specific to whatever fitness component you're trying to accomplish. So if you're trying to accomplish cardiorespiratory fitness or endurance, then you wanna make sure to have some sort of walking or running or biking involved with that or even swimming. If you're trying to focus on muscular strength, you wanna make sure that you're lifting some sort of weight. You have an exercise where you're lifting some sort of weight. You wanna make sure to include progressive, progressive overload. So as you get stronger, you start to progress. As your cardiorespiratory endurance gets better, you start to challenge that a little bit. So if you're, let's say, lifting 15 pounds, don't keep lifting 15 pounds for the next four weeks because the likelihood of you getting stronger in the next week or two, being able to up that by a couple pounds is extremely likely, especially if you're being consistent. So don't just stay at the same thing. You want to vary the frequency. You want to vary the intensity, the amount of time that you work out, the type of workout you're doing, the volume. You want to make sure that you have a variety of different things. If you need some help with that, a really good app is called Beachbody, and you can just download that. It's a subscription. It's about $100 a year, and they have a whole series of workout programs and plans on there that you can do that help you to vary things up if you're not quite sure what types of workouts you want to do. All right, make sure to rest. Your body always needs that time to rest. So as you're progressing, as you're overloading your body, make sure you're getting great quality sleep because that's when your body is going to heal. So then you can come back and you can do some new activity the next day. Uh, reversibility, this is fitness improvements um, are lost when the demands on the body is lowered. So if you don't use it, you'll lose it, right? So you can work out for 10 years. And then if you stop working out for two or three months, you're going to lose all that progress. So you want to make sure that, again, this is something consistent. You find something that you are able to consistently continue to do throughout your active life. Cardiorespiratory endurance and exercise. So frequency, generally it's recommended about three to five times weekly, but you can walk every day. Now, do you or should you run nine miles every day? Probably not. 
right? That's going to be a little too hard on your body, especially if you've never done it before. But you can walk each day. You can ride a bike each day. There's a lot of different things that you can do. When it comes to intensity, there's a thing called a VO2 max, and this is going to be a device that's put on the face. And you may have seen them in Gatorade commercials where the individual is either on the treadmill or they're on a bicycle and they have this big mask strapped to them. And what, what they're testing is they're testing the, testing the efficiency of the lungs. They're trying to see how much oxygen can the lungs bring in for the body to utilize in each breath while individuals are working out. When it comes to target heart rate, and I'll show you how to take that in a sec, um, the range should be beneficial for your personal body type. So generally you can utilize a heart rate monitor. There's a lot of those that are out there now. Even some of the exercise machines have heart rate monitors. Or you can use METs, which are generally measures of metabolic cost of an energy. And generally some of these, if you're really getting into advanced testing, physical testing for cardio endurance, they'll take blood samples, they'll take urine samples, they'll do all kinds of things. But um, generally, if you are just looking for something simple, 20 to 60 minutes is going to be a great way to increase your cardiorespiratory endurance. You don't have to start off on 60 minutes. You can start off with a 20 minute walk and then improve as time goes on. All right, cardiorespiratory endurance exercises. So you want to look at type, stress a large portion of the body's muscle mass for a prolonged period of time. So again, walking, jogging, running, swimming, biking. Uh, if you love to swim, go swim for an hour right? You're going to be able to accomplish that time frame of cardiorespiratory exercise or endurance. Uh, volume of exercise, about 150 minutes per week of moderate to intense. Again, as long as you make yourself out of breath, then you're working that cardiorespiratory system. And make sure you have progression in there. Don't just swim for an hour every day. Maybe swim for an hour and then walk for 30 minutes the next day and then jog for 10 minutes the next day. Jump rope is a great one too. Uh, and make sure you have a warm up and cool down. So you wanna prepare your body for whatever the exercise is that you're about to take it through. So when you're checking your pulse, there's different ways that you can get your target heart rate. One way that you can get is by checking the carotid pulse. It's on either side of your neck right here, or you can check your radial pulse, which is on either side on the thumb side of your wrist. Generally, the easiest one to fill is gonna be the carotid, especially if you've done a hard workout, you're not trying to find your radial, you're probably gonna go for the carotid. What you wanna do is count how many pulses you feel for 15 seconds. And once you get that number, remember, remember that. All right, so after you got your count for 15 seconds, what you're going to do is on this chart, you can go ahead and find your age, find how many, or find your target heart rate, or find how many beats you got in the 15 seconds, and then you can find your target heart rate. Your target heart rate is going to indicate where your pulse needs to be in order to actually be in that stage of training your cardio endurance. So that's why this is important uh, to be able to find because when it keeps you safe, and ensures that you're staying within the parameters that your body is able to do and you're not overworking yourself. All right, approximate met and calorie cost. Remember that calorie is just a measurement of energy, right? There are studies that suggest that it can help maintain weight, but really it's gonna be the quality of the calories that you get that help you maintain weight. Now, if you drop to, let's say, a thousand calories a day when you were eating 5,000 calories a day, of course your weight's gonna shift, but is it muscle or is it fat? That's what you wanna see. You can lose weight by chopping off an arm, but is that actually putting your body in the position that you want it to be in? All right, so at rest, if you have one met, you're burning about one to 1.2 calories per minute, all the way up if you're jogging, eight to 12 minutes or the speed that you're jogging, it's gonna be about 10 to 15 calories per minute. A lot of the machines now have the calorie counter for you. There's also watches that show your calorie counter. So if you really wanna count calories, go for it. I more so would go for what is your body doing and how much are you stressing it? And how out of breath are you? Are you sweating? Do you feel like you've actually worked your body out and you've gotten stronger? That's really gonna help you maintain that weight a little more than just counting calories. All right, exercise for muscular strength and endurance. So you can do resistant exercises, meaning that I have a um, weight or I'm pushing against a wall, right? Um, 
Isometric is going to be static exercises, so I'm standing in place and I'm lifting a weight or I'm squatting. Dynamic exercises are going to be maybe I squat and then I jump, right? Um, core training is going to be your abs, your obliques, and your back muscles. It's everything around here. So imagine like you're wearing a corset. Those are the muscles that you're trying to train. Uh, sex differences, testosterone plays a huge role. So again, ladies, don't worry. We don't have enough testosterone to get super big in bulk um, and buff like the rock. We don't have that. Men, you have the possibility of that, but understand your skeletal size plays a role. So if you have a smaller skeletal size, that means you're not going to have enlarged muscle because that could cause fractures in your skeletal system and breaks in your skeletal system. Also, speed of nervous system control. So you really want to do dynamic exercises where you're testing your neuromuscular system. Sometime, maybe some days you do push-ups slow. Maybe some days you do push-ups fast, right? It really just depends on what you're feeling that day, but make sure to switch it up. Don't do the same exact thing every single day. All right, exercise for muscular strength and endurance. So choose appropriate equip equipment. Don't get weight that you haven't earned the right to lift yet. Yeah, your buddy may have been in the gym for the past eight months and now he or she is able to lift heavier weight, maybe you're just getting into it, don't try to keep up with those individuals. Just do what's going to be beneficial for you. Uh, frequency, at least two non-consecutive days a week is when you want to perform muscular strength. It's not a good idea to perform heavy, heavy lifting on top of heavy lifting. All right. You want to make sure to give a day in between those times so your body can uh, recover because what's happening when you work out is your muscles are being broken down if you never give them a chance to build back up if you never give them a chance to recover you're just going to continue to break down and you're not going to see results all right beware of supplements i highly highly urge this all right generally what you need for fitness you can get from natural food sources and whole food sources if you do decide to take a supplement, please make sure you are researching the company, especially if it's something like steroids. I don't recommend steroids, but I do know and I've had athletes that have utilized steroids. And yes, they get benefits, but understand that it is a hormone and you're messing up your natural hormone rhythm. As you work out, as you eat correctly, you're naturally going to get growth hormone in your body. It's something that naturally is produced. We don't need to externally inject it into us. All right, so remember when we talked about core muscles. Core muscles are going to be those muscles in the abdomen. They're going to be in the pelvic floor. We talked about Kegel exercises where you, actually, you act like you are holding in your pee. Ladies and guys, you can do this. Um, your spinal muscles, so the muscles all along your spine. Your trunk muscles, your back muscles, your buttocks, your hips, your pelvis. So really, if you were to cut off your arms and your legs, those are going to be the areas that you really want to make sure are strong. And the reason why is because movement comes from your core. It comes from your torso. It comes from your hips. So the stronger you are there, the more balanced and coordinated you are there, the less likely you are to, one, experience injury, and two, your body's going to be able to move so much more efficiently. All right, flexibility exercise is one of my favorites. I always feel great after I provide or after I perform some flexibility exercises. You can do static stretching, meaning you're going to sit in place, put your leg out, and then you're going to touch your toes. You can do dynamic stretching where I'm jogging in place and then I kick my leg out, right? You've seen those athletes warm up that way. That's dynamic stretching. You can do ballistic stretching, meaning if my leg is out and I'm touching my toe, I do a bounce into it. Not recommended because if you bounce a little too hard, what's going to happen to those tissues? It's going to tear and now you just cause yourself a strain, a muscle strain. So it's not really recommended. Static, dynamic, um, yoga, you can utilize those and they're going to be just as good, if not better than ballistic stretching. Frequency, two to three days a week. Uh, five to seven is optimal. If you can stretch every day, then your body's going to love you for it. All right. Intensity, volume, progression. You want to make sure you progress into it. So one of the biggest tips I give is you don't want stretching to hurt. You want to feel a stretch, but you don't want it to be painful. If it's painful, you're going too far for what your body can do at that moment. And flexibility is something that's pretty easy to obtain if you're consistent with it. All right. Training in specific skills. So learn the skills required for the sport or activity without weights, without speed. You want to get the movement down first. So I recommend contacting an instructor or qualified instructor and make sure they're qualified to actually teach you how to go through the movements. 
Also, there's a lot of videos online that you can utilize of individuals that are actually pretty smart and they know what they're doing and they can teach you how to do those things as well. All right, so putting it all together. We have cardiorespiratory endurance exercise. That's one thing that you should actually incorporate. That's one component. Again, about 150 minutes, 75 minutes of vigorous activity or a combination of both. Just get up and move. Muscular strength and endurance. You want to work those um, muscular areas, especially the core and especially the hips, right? It's important to maintain endurance in those areas. Flexibility exercises. Again, one of my favorites is yoga. I get the cardiorespiratory endurance because my heart rate gets going. I start to breathe a little heavy, plus I get the flexibility. It's kind of that dynamic stretching. And then skill training if you want to incorporate skill training as well. All right, so when it comes to FIT plus VP principle for cardiorespiratory endurance program. So this is if you're in an actual program. You want to do this about three to five days per week. All right, you can pick whatever days you want for those. When it comes to the intensity, you want about 90% of your max heart rate um, to about 85% of your heart rate. So remember, we learned how to find heart rate, either carotid or radio pulse, count for 15 seconds. You can go back and utilize that chart if you'd like to find your target heart rate. Where, why we want to be in that target heart rate zone is because that's where we're going to actually be able to see results, right? You can go and walk or you can sit and you can play the Wii, right? Maybe you're moving, but are you actually going to be able to build up cardiorespiratory endurance to be able to be fit to perform other activities? No, right? So this is just a general guideline to say, hey, if you want to build up this cardiorespiratory endurance, this is how you can do it. This is where your target heart rate would need to be. But again, we can keep it simple. As long as you're breathing heavy, you're sweating, then you're training your cardiorespiratory endurance. All right, getting started. Consistency is key. So if you don't write anything down from the slide, but one thing, write down consistency is key. All right, make sure to select your instructor appropriately if you're the type that you need someone there um, to help you. Or again, you can download an app like Beachbody or you can find someone that's qualified online to watch their videos and see what they're doing. Um, pick the proper equipment, pick the proper facilities. Again, safety is huge. You wanna make sure that you're staying safe as you're performing these exercises. Get help when you need it. Get advice when you need it. Don't pretend like you know everything, right? Seek out those answers to help you. Um, choosing a fitness center, again, make sure it's safe, make sure it's clean. You don't need a gym to get fit, all right? That's a misconception. You don't need a gym to get fit. You can go outside and you can get fit. You can do it in your room and get fit. Make sure to maintain a balanced diet, stay hydrated all day long, not just when you're working out, and you'll be on your way to becoming much more fit and reaching your goal. All right, so managing your fitness program, start slow. I know a lot of individuals just wanna jump right into it. Just make sure you're staying safe. And again, don't do anything you haven't earned the right to do yet. So if you wanna do a muscle up, where you pull yourself up and then you pull yourself over the bar, great. But if you've never even done a pull up, don't try to attempt that for the first time, right? Work your way up. So have a beginning phase, progress, and then maintain that phase. But understand that consistency is going to be huge. So you need to be consistent with whatever program you're putting yourself on. And don't be afraid to vary it. If you start weightlifting and you're like, I'm kind of getting bored, go do something else. That's fine. You're still working your body and you're still achieving a lot of those health benefits from exercise. All right, so sample progressions, if you need help with, okay, how am I actually gonna progress these things? Um, so it depends on the week, it depends on the stage that you're in. Generally, the first month, you wanna get your body movements down if you've never worked out before, if you're a newbie, or if you haven't worked out for a long time. Make sure you get those movements down. Make sure that with your body weight, you're able to actually perform movements with your body weight before you progress to movement or you progress to weights. So some individuals, you may not be able to add weights until maybe week four, week five, or week six. But again, it just depends on your body. It depends on how consistent you are. The body adapts extremely well. So you don't need to do anything extra for the body to learn what you're doing to it and for it to actually progress. You just need to consistently do those movements and consistently challenge yourself. All right, preventing and managing athletic injuries. If you've taken my Sport Med 1, Sport Med 2, or after school class, uh, you know that this is huge. 
when in doubt, rice it out. So if you notice that, oh, my knees are a little sore after this workout or my shoulder feels a little sore, go ahead and add some ice to it. Make sure you have that flexibility because especially when it comes to lower back injuries, I've noticed in my practice that a lot of it is just due to individuals who are not flexible and they're trying to perform these movements that their bodies can't move through because their muscles aren't flexible enough to get them into those body positions. All right, so six basic guidelines to help you prevent injuries. Stay in condition. Biggest thing with that is don't do anything you haven't earned the right to do yet. Warm up thoroughly. And I mean like 10 minutes. Some individuals may even need to go 15 minutes for a warm up. Use proper body mechanics. The easiest way to do this is to make sure you can properly do a squat, properly do a push up, properly do a pull up first without any weight. And then you can add weight to it. Don't exercise when you're ill or if you're overtrained. Remember, when you exercise, you're breaking the body down. And so your body needs time to heal. If it's fighting an illness or if you've just gone way too hard, it's going to need extra time to heal. All right, so make sure you're kind to your body and you give your body that time. But don't give it three weeks. It doesn't need three weeks if you have proper sleep and hydration, nutrition, stress management. It doesn't need all that time, right? A couple days and you're good. Um, Use proper equipment and don't return to normal exercise programs until your injury has healed. So just because you're injured doesn't mean you can't still work out, all right? If I sprained my ankle, my arms and my upper body are still fine. I can still do planks. I can still do bicep curls. I can get on the bike with one leg. Like there's a lot of different things that you can still do. So just because one part of your body's injured doesn't mean you can't work out the rest. And oftentimes studies are showing that as you work out, that body area can actually heal faster versus if you're just sedentary and sitting. All right, so care of common exercise injuries. This just helps you kind of see if I do have a blister, if I do have a joint sprain or a muscle cramp, how should I treat it? These are general guidelines and notice that the majority of them are gonna say rice because for the general public, that's gonna be the best and easiest way for them to take care of it. And if you rest anything long enough, it'll heal not everything but if you rest most things long enough they'll heal especially if you apply ice to it one tip that i would give is for muscular injuries if you're sensing a little soreness maybe in your low back or your glutes heat is always a really good method to use because it increases that blood flow and i've had really good clinical outcomes from that so if you have any injuries while you're working out of course please feel free to let me know i'm more than happy to help all right Staying with your program, again, consistency is key. So if you've never worked out before and you're like, I really don't know about this, aim for three days a week, and then maybe you can increase to five days a week in four, six, eight weeks, right? Adopt a program that's gonna be beneficial to you and your environment, all right? Something that's gonna work for your schedule. And discover what motivates you. Don't be afraid to get out there and try things. If you realize that you have a lot of fun at the trampoline park, maybe that's a form of exercise that you need to start incorporating. If you find that hula hoop is your thing, go get a hula hoop, order it on Amazon and start hula hooping, right? So really just find what motivates you and cross train. Don't hula hoop seven days a week for three years, right? Maybe hula hoop a couple days and then you go for a run the other day or you bike or you lift some weights or just vary it so you don't get bored. All right, and review. So by this point, um, describing the benefits of exercise, we already know the immediate and the long-term effects of exercise. What is physical fitness? Um, explaining the components of an active lifestyle. If you're sitting for six hours a day or more, that means you have a sedentary lifestyle and you really should try to fix that. Um, putting together personal exercise programs. There's different fitness components, cardiorespiratory, there's muscular strength, muscular endurance, there's flexibility. Um, you want to make sure that you are varying things, that you're applying a strategy that works for you. And don't be afraid to try some things out. And if you don't like it, that's okay. I know some individuals that tried out yoga and why I'm a huge advocate of yoga. That just wasn't their thing. They, they weren't motivated by it. They didn't feel a sense of positivity from it. And that's okay, so go ahead and move to something else. But all in all, just make sure that your goal and your why for getting fit is more than just the physical appearance. Make sure that you understand that you're really doing your body a lot of good by moving and exercising and getting stronger. And that long-term 
you're going to be much better off for how you're able to move throughout life and contribute to the world. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And thank you for watching.